subscribers welcome back to my channel once again people much love and appreciation as usual if you haven't subscribed to my channel please go ahead and hit the subscribe button right now people so yo people another day and another murder people you see me like i don't know what going on in the world that we just can't stop the killing killing of our women children that's the killing overall people you see me and this time is a young lady by the name of katisha kojo you see me people she was killed in trinidad and tobago so i'm getting this article from daily express where it's saying murdered woman's family wants answers you see me people them want answers and why um miss kojo was killed so it goes on to say the family of katisha kojo believes that there are too many unanswered questions surrounding her death kojo's body was found on january 28th of a precipice in the heights of a repo and if i'm not mistaken people wasn't that same place where another young lady um body was found as well please drop it in the comment section if you remember that young lady so as i said before people kojo's body was found on january 28th off a precipice in the heights of a repo but it was only positively identified on tuesday a post-mortem is expected to be performed today at the Forensic Science Center in Federation Park. Speaking with the media yesterday, Kojo's sister, Roxanne, said that her sibling did not have the easiest of lives. And people, I'm going to play you a video of her talking about that people. All right, check it out. She was fed up and she wanted to leave. Roxanne Kojo recalling her last conversation with her only sister Katija before her decomposed body was found at the heights of a repo. She says her sister was trying to leave an abusive relationship. My sister passed through all kind of things, real things, the rape and thing too. That is first time, you know, this is real hard. My sister is the most loving sister anybody could have. Caring, sharing, boy, my sister could have, she laughs and she gives you. Roxanne says the death has rocked their family, especially Katisha's three-year-old son. I, I don't even know what to start. He only asked, you know. Even before when we say she was, he was missing the Thursday, because it's the Thursday I find out, and, and the Saturday was my birthday, all kind of thing, too. Roxanne says her sister was last seen on Monday, but an official report was only made on Thursday, leaving many questions unanswered. Whoever was living around maybe far, they hear screaming and they never do nothing. Up to now, we don't even know who made this report in Maraca, St. Joseph, and I live in Cookery. And my sister is living in Cookery. Residents of the Heights of Aripo say the discovery of Kasisha's body resurrected fairs developed one year ago when Andrea's body was found. Harold Diaz describes it as an unhealed wound. He tells the NC3 News many promises were made after the discovery of Andrea's body. We have made recommendations in time past to try to get. Uh, more of a police presence, but unfortunately, uh, nothing has never really materialized. Diaz says when tragedies like this happen, people point fingers in the wrong direction. People generally blame the residents. But the truth of the matter is that this is a peaceful village. The road is lonely, yes. Uh, people can come in and out. They can do whatsoever they wish at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. He suggests placing cameras along the roadway to deter criminals. But another resident believes the solution lies within. It's that with us as a people for this crime thing to stop because as long as we, we, we continue living how we live in, it will always have people like Andrea Barrett and this girl dying. Katisha's sister is begging women to make safety their main priority and to seek help if they need it. The Candlelight Movement describes the situation as heartbreaking and traumatic government still isn't doing enough to protect citizens. It again called on the parliament to give the safety and protection of women the priority it deserves. She goes on to say she said her sister was from Upper Coveney Road 
Diego Martin, but moved out several years ago to live with a male friend. Roxanne said she had questions as to why it took so long for her sister to be reported missing. She living with people and no one made a report until the end of the week. She was missing since the Monday. And furthermore, why did they take or why did they make the report at the Maracas police station if she living with them in Kokorite? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, people. There are too many questions surrounding this that just not adding up and we need answers. Roxanne said Kojo was the middle child of three siblings and was the life of the party. She was the type to always make you smile. She always was looking out for everyone and if you didn't have, she would give you her last. This was a beautiful soul that they took away from this world. Roxanne said her mother, Patricia, had been in shambles since hearing the news and said Kojo's three-year-old son was only asking for his mother but no one knew what to tell him. Kojo, 21, was last seen leaving her home at Harden Place, Kokorite, around 8.30 p.m. last week, Monday, January 24th. And people, we're in a February right now, you know? That's just crazy. When she failed to return, her friends made a report to the St. James Police Station on Saturday, January 29th. However, the day before, Friday, January 28th, a body was found an estimated 75 feet down a precipice at the heights of a repo. It was in a state of decomposition and police were not able to identify the deceased. Kojo's friends journeyed to the Forensic Science Center after investigators indicated that the body may be that of the missing girl. She was identified by the clothing she wore, her shoes and her glasses. A post-mortem will try to determine what may have led to Kojo's death. I don't know people, the heights of Aripo, like it's a bunch of bush and hills and I don't know what need to be done, but something need to be done. So them people who are kill off them young girls that stop dash body over the camera or something i don't know people something need to happen because i know this is not the first that somebody has been found in the heights of a repo correct me if i'm wrong you know people correct me if i'm wrong and people um there was a bunch of comments um i saw on social media especially facebook talking about race and you know oh because it's a black girl um they never make it urgent enough to try to find her people let's not make it about race let's make it about why people are kill off our young women why people are kill each other let's that's what they need to talk about forget the race because if people over there kill people we wouldn't be talking about any race at all one person goes on to say some of these racist comments are ridiculous why it always have to be about ethnicity why it can't be about young women losing their lives if you all put that same effort and actually come out and support it might help this is not about pnm or unc it's about the lives being taken away come on people have some sort of decency and that's what me i said this person said the same thing why it have to be about race you know I me mean? people let's not go there let's not go there and just want to give a big shout out and condolence this goes out to this young girl's family and friends people because such a senseless killing Life lost way too soon. 21 years will have her whole life ahead of our people. And now family and friends have to go prepare a funeral. Um, just a very sad and unfortunate situation, people. But once I get more information, I will update you guys and let you know what's going on. 
All right. Bless up yourself from Yard and Abroad TV. Much love. Bless up.